This is how you perform the suitcase deadlift. So step one of a suitcase deadlift is to nail your setup. Your setup is pretty much everything with this exercise because it can make or break how you're moving and how you balance the barbell or whatever implement that you're holding. So if you're doing a barbell suitcase deadlift, you're gonna wanna line up to where that center knurling is around where that midfoot is. So you basically wanna have the barbell lined up with the center of your mass. Now, when you bend down to pick up that bar for step two, I want you to assume a setup position that is similar to your high handle trap bar deadlift setup. Because the bar is to our side or because the kettlebell is to our side, we can have those knees come forward a little bit more because we don't need to clear the knees. So similar to a trap bar deadlift, assume a similar setup to where you're going to have a little bit more knee flexion and hip flexion to create a nice set hip and torso angle. So what I like to think about is bringing my stance out a tiny bit wider than my conventional setup. So similar to what I use in a trap bar deadlift and then setting accordingly. Step three is making sure that you're not over retracting your scapula. So I want you to think about just letting that arm hang, but keeping it nice and tight to the body. By doing this, you're gonna allow that barbell to track a little bit more vertically so you have less sway and you can actually focus on lifting the barbell without having too much lean or losing balance. And it's gonna allow the lat and the upper back muscles to do their job to stabilize that joint as you lift up that weight. Step four is bracing and standing up. So once you have your midfoot set up and you are set and ready to lift, I want you to think about bracing accordingly for the loaded hand and focus on standing up and applying equal pressure into the feet. So essentially, as you do suitcase deadlifts, they are gonna be designed to kind of pull you into the side that you're lifting on. So what I want you to do is think about balancing that out and keeping a more vertical position with the hips and torso. So by kind of fighting that pull, I want you to think about standing up evenly and bringing your hips through accordingly and just letting that arm hang and standing nice and upright. You don't need to like overextend with the torso because that can kind of throw you off balance. And if you're leaning too much into one hip, then there's a good chance you're not applying equal pressure into the feet. For step five, you're gonna think about breaking at the hip and knees evenly. So similar to how you do in a trap bar deadlift, you're gonna focus on breaking at those two similarly, and that's gonna bring the weight down in this nice relatively vertical path. If you notice that you're losing the kettlebell or barbell forward or backwards, there's a good chance your hip or knee break might be off a little bit. So definitely look there first if you notice that happening because ideally for step five, as you lower that weight, it should come down evenly. So as you set, there's gonna be very relative like points where one side of the barbell hits and then another side. So ideally you want those plates to hit either evenly on each side or just be a little bit off, but not to a point to where you have to almost reset or like refinesse your overall setup every single rep. So two benefits that come along with these suitcase deadlift is number one, they're a really fun challenge and I think there is some functional carryover there. Now I don't like saying functional carryover because technically every exercise could be called functional depending on the context you're using it in. But in real life, when you're bending down to pick something up on one side, how are you sequencing that? How are you doing that? By training this range of motion, especially with a nice progressive load, I think you could build up some of the muscular tissues on the body that are gonna be supporting that style of movement. So I think this movement can have a nice carryover to real life function, but also it's just a really fun challenge. Oftentimes when we deadlift, we are bilateral and the weight is usually even. By challenging one side of the body, it's gonna create a little bit of a challenge with our sequencing, which can be fun to learn how your body moves when displacing force and weight with different ranges of motion, but it can also be a fun mental challenge too and a grip challenge at that if you don't strap up. The second benefit that comes along with suitcase deadlifts is you're gonna get a nice core benefit there. So your obliques are gonna be working to stabilize that torso a lot. So as opposed to working through like a greater degree of lateral flexion and extension, you're gonna have these obliques working to kind of stabilize the torso and not let you go too deep into lateral flexion as you lift that weight. So as you stand up and as you lower weight back down with suitcase deadlifts, trying to balance that load is gonna be a fun challenge for the core, but you're also gonna get a ton of oblique benefit. So from a training point of view, they can be a great tool for building up the core, but also training some of the same musculature that you will train with the normal deadlift. So two quick mistakes to avoid with the suitcase deadlift is number one, setting up either too forward or too behind the weight that you're lifting. So whether you're lifting a kettlebell, barbell, or dumbbell, you want the center of the handle or the center of mass of that implement to line up with your center of mass. And that's usually around the midfoot. If you're not doing so, you're gonna waste a lot of energy just trying to complete reps because you're trying to balance and you could sequence a little bit weird, which is gonna take away from the benefit that we're after with the suitcase deadlift. The second mistake is to avoid doing a ton of like flexion and extension with the torso. We're gonna have some natural flexion and extension happening as we get heavier with loads, but if you notice that you're doing like almost like a side bend, almost range of motion, 
you're likely too heavy or you're just not sequencing accordingly for what you're trying to accomplish. And as weight gets heavier, like you're always gonna have some flexion and extension laterally with the torso. But if it looks like you're almost side bending that weight up, you're likely doing a little bit too much. And I would suggest going down in weight if that looks like you. All right, so when it comes to programming the suitcase deadlift, really it's dealer's choice, and I would suggest plugging and playing to see how you respond to these accordingly. What I would suggest doing for most folks, though, is starting with them as an accessory. I almost treat them as like a core exercise, and I'll put them either in the middle or towards the end of my workouts. They can be a fun challenge. Plus, you don't have to load them super heavy to get a nice benefit, so doing something like three sets for eight to 10 reps on each side can be a nice starting point, and keeping that weight a little bit on like the seven to eight out of 10 10 effort side can be a nice way to help you acclimate to this exercise, but also just see how you respond. That way you don't go super heavy right away and either like throw off your mechanics or go super heavy and get like a ton of doms to your obliques. You can also use them as a main compound exercise if you're really sadistic and you wanna train the deadlift from like a more unilateral point of view. So they can also be great there. And for that context, you'll wanna just plug and play with the reps and intensities that you're using based on your programming goals. Either way though, I think using them as an accessory is a really good starting point and treating them like a core exercise towards the end of your workout will be most beneficial for most folks. And then as you get better at this movement and as you can tolerate more weight, you can start plugging them in higher up in your workout to get a little bit more of like a relative strength benefit with them regarding how much intensity you're using and lifting. All right, y'all, that is up my suitcase deadlift guide. This is one of the most underappreciated deadlift variations in my opinion. It's a fun challenge. It puts your body into a different means when it comes to managing and moving loads and I would suggest everybody play with it here and there with their programming. If you have additional questions on the suitcase deadlift, drop a comment down below or reach out to me personally, whichever you prefer. And as always, guys, drop a like on the video, drop a like on the channel. I'll see you in the next one.